Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the 10 celebrities you didn't realize were in Star Trek. Star Trek is one of the most iconic franchises in the history of television and film. Despite the original series only running for a few seasons, it spawned numerous spin-offs and films, and created the kind of cult following that basically defined one part of nerd culture. It shouldn't be much of a secret that among those nerds there are going to be some pretty big names. After all, we're talking about a show that counted Martin Luther King Jr. as one of its biggest, earliest fans. So it's no real surprise that once in a while, some pretty unexpected celebrities have a tendency to pop up in the general vicinity of the Enterprise crew. Number 10. Jim O'Hare Much love for his portrayal of the bumbling civil servant Jerry Gergich in the NBC comedy Parks and Recreation, veteran character actor Jim O'Hare is also a member of the enormous Star Trek family. O'Hare, whose Parks co-star Chris Pratt auditioned for the role of Kirk in the relaunched Star Trek movie series, donned a plastic forehead to become a member of the Jai, a humanoid species of the Delta Quadrant in a Star Trek Voyager episode, Critical Care. Though unnamed, O'Hare's character has an interesting story arc within the episode. His character was betrayed by the episode's antagonist, Gar, who had an affair with his wife. Though O'Hare's appearance was little more than background dressing, for fans of Parks and Recreation, his brief and unheralded appearance is sure to make them smile. Number 9. Seth MacFarlane the man behind Family Guy and Ted is famous for his love of Star Wars, which has seeped over into his hit animated show on numerous occasions. However, Seth MacFarlane is also a huge fan of the Star Trek franchise, as evidenced by his appearance in two episodes of Star Trek Enterprise. In seasons 3 and 4 of Enterprise, MacFarlane appears as Rivers, a Starfleet engineer. Rivers remains in the background, but MacFarlane's presence was felt elsewhere in the series. The Enterprise character, Ensign McFarlane, who appeared in the episode The Zindi, was named for the famous cartoonist. Keen fans of Family Guy would also note that McFarlane reveals his fandom for the Star Trek franchise with a multitude of scenes parodying the original series as well as the next generation. After all, the fact that Patrick Stewart has so prominently featured in McFarlane's work isn't just due to the fact that Stewart is awesome, it's because McFarlane is an enormous fanboy. Who says that you can only love Star Wars or Star Trek? Number 8. Brian Singer Few directors have influenced modern science fiction more than Brian Singer. The director of X-Men, X2, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Superman Returns is a well-known superfan of Star Trek. Seeking to mix business with pleasure, Singer has been trying to bring a new incarnation of Star Trek back to television. As famous fans of the series often are, Singer was offered the chance to appear in the franchise. In the 2002 movie Star Trek Nemesis, Singer appeared as a tactical officer aboard the USS Enterprise-E, commanded by Jean-Luc Picard, played by Patrick Stewart, who was Dr. Charles Xavier. Singer had directed on multiple occasions within the wildly successful X-Men franchise. Number 7. Joan Collins Iconic diva Joan Collins achieved critical acclaim for her work in film, theater, television, and literature. However, the Dynasty star is also remembered for making guest appearances in the biggest TV shows of the 60s and 70s, including Batman, Mission Impossible, then Star Trek the original series. On the 6th of April 1967, The City on the Edge of Forever aired for the first time. It was the 28th episode of Star Trek to ever be shown on television. The episode focuses on Dr. McCoy, who is transported back into the 1930s, forcing his crew members into a delicate rescue mission. In 1930s New York, McCoy meets Edith Keeler, the social worker running a soup kitchen, played by the legendary Collins. The episode is remembered as one of, if not the best episodes in the original series. For her contribution to an episode which lives on as a favorite to many, Collins's cameo must certainly be considered one of the greatest ever in the franchise. Number 6. Tom Morello Founding member of the Grammy Award-winning band Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello is frequently listed as one of the most influential guitarists to ever pick up the instrument. It would be surprising to many, including legions of Rage fans, that Morello appeared twice within the Star Trek franchise. In 1998, Morello appeared in the feature film Star Trek Insurrection. He played a sonar officer, the sonar being the antagonists to the crew of the Enterprise. In 2000, Morello appeared as a Starfleet crew member in Season 6 of Voyager, in the episode Good Shepherd. The episode featured Captain Janeway taking a hands-on approach with the tutelage of a trio of underperforming crew members. Though Morello's performances may have been missed by most, he did manage to get a line in on Voyager, instructing the enigmatic Captain Janeway that her desired destination was to the left, Mom. Number 5. King Abdullah bin Al-Hussein 
For many reasons, it's good to be the king. King of Jordan, Abdullah Il bin Al Hussein, who is a huge fan of Star Trek, was thrilled to be offered the chance to tour the set of Star Trek Voyager in 1996. Much to the royal's surprise, he was offered the chance to appear in the background of the show, which he accepted immediately. King Abdullah played a science officer in the opening of the season 2 episode Investigations. Many would think pretending to be a member of Starfleet would be a stretch for the monarch. However, King Abdullah is more than familiar with military matters. The king is a graduate of the British Royal Military Academy, who served as a second lieutenant in the Royal Hussars. In Jordan, he served as a member of the 40th Armored Brigade and the Royal Jordanian Air Force as a Cobra attack helicopter pilot. Number 4. Mick Fleetwood Mick Fleetwood of Fleetwood Mac fame has perhaps the strangest cameo ever witnessed in the Star Trek universe. Manhunt from Season 2 of Star Trek The Next Generation featured ship counselor Deanna Troy's mother, Luaxana, played by Jean Rodenbury's then-wife, searching for a mate on the Starship Enterprise. Among the pool of unsuspecting bachelors is a highly uncomfortable Captain Picard. During the episode, Fleetwood appears briefly as an Antidian dignitary. However, despite Fleetwood getting a close-up, even his most dedicated fans would have missed him entirely were they not clued in. Fleetwood, an enormous fan of Star Trek himself, was given a costume that included a huge, fish-like headpiece that rendered him completely unrecognizable. The hilarious wardrobe and unique cameo added to what lives on as one of TNG's most light-hearted and charming episodes. Number 3. Stephen Hawking Stephen Hawking, owner of one of the most brilliant minds in recorded history, has influenced the Star Trek franchise in a myriad of ways. The scientist's research into space, and particularly black holes, has provided ample fodder for the writers of Star Trek and many other sci-fi series and movies. Hawking has many achievements to be proud of. One of the least important accomplishments of Hawking, which is pretty cool to say, is that he is the only person to play himself in the Star Trek franchise. In the sixth season of Star Trek The Next Generation, Hawking appeared in the episode Descent. In the episode, Chief Science Officer Data sought scientific advice from the holograms of Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and Stephen Hawking over a game of poker. Hawking was honored in the franchise by having a shuttlecraft named after him, which appeared in The Next Generation, as well as in the movie Star Trek Generations. Number 2. Iggy Pop Unlike most celebrity cameos, when punk rock icon Iggy Pop appeared in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode The Magnificent Ferengi, he wasn't relegated to the background or protected from challenging scenes and dialogue. Iggy, a sci-fi nut at heart, played Yelgren, a Vorta clone whose role within the Evil Dominion was to coax and convince other races into servitude. Iggy's Yelgren featured an entertaining game of cat and mouse with everyone's favorite Ferengi, Quark. Yeldren and Quark faced off in negotiations over a prisoner exchange, with one prisoner being Quark's mother, Ishka. Quark would eventually best Yeldren, with Iggy's character ending up in Starfleet custody. Iggy's turn on DS9 can be considered one of the greatest ever cameos on Star Trek thanks to the importance placed on his character, as well as the acting chops the singer brought to the table. Number 1. Dwayne The Rock Johnson Dwayne The Rock Johnson is well known for being a movie megastar, professional wrestling icon, and owner of an Instagram account you need to follow. However, most people have no idea that Johnson is also an alumni of the Star Trek universe. The People's Champion surprised both Star Trek and wrestling fans in 2000 when he appeared in Tsunkatsi, an episode from the sixth season of Star Trek Voyager. In the episode, Johnson played to his strengths, portraying a pit-fighting champion from the planet Pendari. Johnson's Pendari character battled popular crew member Seven of Nine, a reformed Borg, during the Tenkatsi fighting tournament. After an epic duel, Johnson's Pendari was victorious thanks to some signature pro-wrestling moves. Johnson's guest appearance remains one of the most special cameos to occur in the franchise, given the incredible success Johnson has achieved since his stint in the Delta Quadrant. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give us a like below, it really helps out. Also, subscribe to our channel for brand new stuff like this every day of the week. Also, if you like this video, on the right there I'm going to link to two other videos. One is the top 10 influential TV shows that aren't on the air anymore, and you can guess which TV show is one of those. And then below that we've got, it's kind of a weird one, but it's definitely, it'll definitely make you think. It's the top 10 reasons that the Star Trek universe was the first Matrix. So be sure to check those out, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like. Links to everything if you're on a mobile device and can't click on the screen, then you'll find links in the description below. Thanks for watching.